We just bought a house! All right. John and Kim Burton Race have sunk everything into their dream of finding a simple life on the Devon coast. Good. So now it's official. For the next 35 years, I'm broke. And Kim has thrown herself into the refurbishment of the new restaurant. Great feeling, though, isn't it? It is, yeah. This week, a gas problem threatens the restaurant's future. <laughs> oh, God, help me. And John is pushed to boiling point. We don't That's need the his, environmental health. That's here. not his issue. He's coming in just to see how we're getting on. Well, you can kiss his ass, because I'm not going to. John and Kim Burton Race have got just nine days to get their new restaurant ready for opening. Their future life in Devon is riding on its success. Brace yourself. And it now looks in jeopardy. Hi there. Oh my God, it's a tad messy. Kim's in charge of the building work and she's not happy. It's no good everyone passing the buck. We've got no. to sort the situation out. Yes, We've got to open on the 27th. Yes, and without these, with these problems, it won't be. With less than two weeks to opening, they've just discovered that to run John's new kitchen, the gas supply will need upgrading, which means digging up the road outside the restaurant. To dig up the road, they've got to go to the local authority to get the permission to do that. So you probably... You, Maybe talking six weeks, minimum. So really, what are we saying? There's no solution to this, then? Oh, God. We have to open on that date because we've already done our budgets for the bank. We have had to present the bank with how much we're going to take from day one. In the first week alone, the bank is expecting them to take £16,000. Any delay in opening would cripple their finances and threaten the restaurant's future. I mean, I can't understand why they wait till the 11th hour and then everybody's and then, chucking yeah. their arms up mm. in the air. John and Kim's new restaurant manager, Edwin Pope, has picked right. a terrible time to join the team. You OK? Just. No, no, not OK at all. Oh, God, help me. Their only hope of opening on time is if the gas company agrees to rush through the job, but the engineer doing the site inspection refuses to be drawn. Have you ever heard of anything done that time? <laughs> <laughs> it's called no comment. No comment, yeah. no comment. Yeah. There'll be a lot of them here. <laughs> they now face an agonising wait. Oh, my head's going to explode. Meanwhile, in blissful ignorance of the drama back at the restaurant, John is concentrating on the other side of the business, cooking. He knows from experience that about 40% of the restaurant customers will choose beef. So getting the right supplier and the right meat is crucial. Everything in the shop is local, yeah. It's, everything is within a 10-mile radius of the shop. OK. Um, so what, what, so it's their local Devon breed, is it? Oh, yes, yes. What South is it? Devon. South Devon? South Devon's, yeah. Do you, is ever come around? Devon has two indigenous breeds of cattle, the Ruby Red and the South yeah. Devon. Yep. Neither of which John's tasted before, so he's keen to find out if they're good enough for his menu. And, and why do you sell South Devons? Is that because it's you're from? Because they've been farming and selling South Devons here since 1768, or you know, I mean, for hundreds of years. Right. It's just what we know, and it's what people come for. And how long has this one been hanging? Three weeks. You yeah, can see by the colour. It's yeah, some, it's, well it's dark, and it's but there's some lovely marbling in there. The marbling, yeah, superb. You can have this one on the house. Oh, lovely, thank you. Just John's right. custom is well worth the odd sirloin steak. I'll let you know as soon as I've tasted it. OK, love, thank you. If the restaurant's successful, the monthly meat bill will be about £4,500. What I like is the old-fashioned beef with a good marbling for it. Price and consistency are all important, but the bottom line is, nice does the beef taste up, good? Yeah. Seven ounces. Now comes the best part. Kids in bed, bottle of wine, and steak tasting. Lots of flavour, but what about the texture? A little bit chewy. Thank you. Butter. Mm. It's lovely. 
South Devon. Totally different thing, isn't it? For once, I think I've got to agree with you. Just oh, for once. What a surprise. The steak they choose for the menu comes from a South Devon, bred about seven miles from the restaurant. It's lovely. Now all they need is a restaurant to serve it in. Right on schedule, the new kitchen goes in. And there's good news about the gas. After a nail-biting wait, the job's been rushed through and the road is dug up to connect the extra supply. But the builders will need a miracle to finish on time. They have to be out by Sunday evening because John and his chefs need three days to prepare for opening. However, with a day and a half left, they've still got loads to do. Monday morning, John arrives ready to start cooking. Hi, Richard, how are you? But it's chaos at the restaurant. The builders are still very much in evidence. Not really. Dust everywhere. Joke. And John's not happy. He's got a kitchen, but it's in the middle of a building site. At least Kim's relieved, though. Right, and here is the gas pipe that caused all the worry last week. So, £4,000 later, here it is installed. But anyway, at least I won't have to listen to John moaning anymore. He'll be able to get those cookers on. <laughs> As soon as John and his chef set foot in the kitchen, the gas strikes again. There should be gas now. We've got gas, haven't we? The new supply is working, but they've now discovered a leak under the restaurant floor. So what do you need them to do? It's a disastrous start. Well, I need the kitchen commissioned so I can get cooking. I need the restaurant staff to get cleaning and hoovering. I've got dairy produce stacking up outside with the brick dust. And it's a complete nightmare. I think John's just desperate to get in there because they need at least three or four days to prep for opening. And, you know, he was very keen to sort of get all the stocks on. So it's just delaying him. Right, let's do something. Right. This is driving me insane. Right. With no chance of getting behind the stoves, John heads off to give his new waiting staff a pep talk. Yeah, I'm not one of those chefs that I'm all God and everyone else is crap. It's not. I look at a restaurant as a restaurant as a whole and the most we can, the most the food is, the most the food is, is 30% of the whole thing. Decor, I don't know, 10%, 20%. But the service is all important. If you want to get any results, and I want to get those results, I have to have the right front of house. I won't take prisoners. I won't. That's not a warning, that's a promise. I don't think any of the waiting staff know what he's like. As he screams and shouts and grunts and raves and throws stuff and goes, Rah! I've come to a stage in my life that I want to try and create a, a restaurant and an atmosphere and an environment that I want to eat in. So I'm getting rid of all the pomp and ceremony. And what I want from the service is smiley, friendly, happy people. Smiley, friendly, happy people means you're going to get loads of tips. But first, there are toilets to clean. He seems like quite a character. He made me laugh. He made me very nervous. We all seem quite up for it, so it's quite exciting, really. Hiya. Seeing the sign, it brings it all home, really, that it's happening now. What are you doing, sunbathing? <laughs> well, you could call it that, yes. Yeah, get us a copy, will you? Yeah. <laughs> Casual, isn't it? It's Monday. Yeah. Right, so look, we're deciding where, where the yeah, side should go. Yeah. I still prefer it on the left. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. They've got the sign, but they're still a long way from having a restaurant to go with it. There's no way in the world we're as ready as we should be. If you look down on the floor, Half the tiles haven't been grouted in, so that's got to be done. At the same time, we've still done no cooking, put no stocks on our sauces, and there's no chance of us doing that because we've got no gas. The kitchen still hasn't been commissioned, and it should have been done this morning, and it's all very, very bloody annoying. I am sick of this now. I've had it for two months, and I just want everybody out of here, the thing's finished, and get on to what I'm supposed to be doing, and that's opening a restaurant. But there's still a long way to go yet. 
Upstairs, Kim's specialist team of Venetian plasterers have only just turned up. They're doing the key look for her, which she hopes will put the new angel on the map. Once that goes on, it really intensifies, so colour-wise. It's ground marble dust, isn't it? Yeah, this is a paste. It's like a, a grisella, which is a, a, a lime putty with very, very fine crushed marble. And it'll be like a, a, a glass finish to it, mm. uh, very reflective. And have you got one of the purple? Yes. Oh, my God, yeah, that so, is. Yeah, <laughs> almost aubergine colours. Mm. I suppose, really deep down, I am nervous of when people walk in. I want it to have that wow factor. But... We've got a sound gas test now. It's been a bit of a struggle today. <laughs> Four, we found. <laughs> Four leaks. Yeah, all under the floor. So, uh, I'm going to go home and have a drink tonight, I think. <laughs> By the end of Monday, the chefs have done no cooking, and the restaurant still looks like a building site. Even though there's good news about the gas, John is starting to feel the pressure. Now, probably for the first time ever, I'm getting nervous. I don't know how much over budget I've actually gone, but I've got a, a good idea, and it's quite scary. I've had to sign a debenture on my house to cover the borrowing. It's a guarantor. If you don't make up your payments, if you don't pay me the interest within the period agreed, if you don't do the turnover you think you're going to do and you can't cover the loan, we're coming for the money one way or the other. So it's quite scary, especially when you've got six kids and you're putting the house up. John and Kim Burton Race have two days left to get their new restaurant ready for opening. And everything is dangerously behind schedule. Robert, are you just trying the bread or are you making a full batch? Just trying them and then see how they um, pan out. Kim is still waiting for crucial deliveries like tables and chairs. The builders show no sign of finishing, and John and his chefs have only just got in the kitchen. We're just getting used to the ovens, getting used to the kitchen. We've got the chicken stock on, we've got the veal stock on. We're playing around and experimenting with bread. We've got a new combi oven, all singing, all dancing, and none of us know how to work it. It's so high tech. So some of the bread is a bit of a disaster. This is, first, this is the first batch. So I'm going to start the menu with, with, with a nice fish soup. I'm going to do something with mussels. Uh, obviously, lobsters, scallops, crab. I mean, shellfish is big around here, so I'm going to take advantage of it. I think the crab in Dartmouth's got to be the best in the world, but it really is absolutely beautiful. Have you got a blue cheese? Yes. From the asparagus to the turbot, local seasonal ingredients will dictate John's menu. Kim has also scoured Devon to kit out the restaurant. She's ordered all the glassware from just down the road. Selected. OK, we yeah, need to go through the order and make sure. From the cutlery and the crockery to the uniforms and artwork, Kim has hundreds of vital orders all arriving at the last minute. And it's nerve-wracking. Everything will be delivered on time as requested. So that's Excellent. another one I can tick off my list as done. Good. John and his chefs have to learn to work together as a highly polished, professional team and fast. Cooking is about foundation. It's like building a house. Stocks, sauces, vinaigrettes, the mayonnaise, the hollandaise, the bases of the pastry. All the basic things in the kitchen have to be right. What we do now, the French call it mise en place. And that's just a posh name for your preparation. What you do for your preparation and how you prepare it will make the difference to the taste. There's lots of things that can go wrong, sure. We don't deliver, or it's cold, or it's this, or it's overcooked. But that's the service. But to give ourselves the best chance, our stocks, our sauces, our bases have to be right. Right, there you go. Tarragon vinaigrette. Yes, chef. Garlic, lemon juice, uh, fresh tarragon. You got any sugar, Nigel? On your table, chef. Some white wine vinegar. As long as you put two-thirds of whatever oil you're going to use to one-third of acid, that's about right. Give it a bit of a whisk. And then, this is the olive oil. Look at that beautiful greeny colour. And then what I normally do is I dilute the olive oil, because it's too strong, with sunflower oil. And that's delicious. And that amount will be enough for us on opening night. Oh, wow. 
It's Kim's first sight of the Venetian marbled walls, the look which she hopes will put the new angel in a class of its own. God, what a fantastic effect, isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah, look at it. Yeah, you've got a in the kitchen. Cracking. Yeah? Have you seen, have you, you haven't been upstairs yet? No, I'm no. going to get the pan tour. <laughs> oh, good. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Oh my God! Yeah, but that's not polished yet. Isn't that fantastic? Once it's had its wax on in the morning, it'll polish up to like a mirror. God, I've got such good taste. Yeah, I know you married me, you know. Oh. <laughs> Some of those lights need to be pushed down a bit further. Your wiring and lights. My wiring. Fourteen thousand pounds. Do you know how many boiled eggs I've got to cook for that? Get boiling. Oh God, I'm so happy. For me, the colours are just like little tutti frutties. They're just, I don't know. I love the colours. And I know it looks a bit wacky, but so what? Deliveries are coming in thick and fast, and to great relief, the tables finally turn up. It's been so long since I ordered them, I've sort of forgotten what they look like. Yeah, they're fine. They're quite large. I didn't. <laughs> All this, that have people have extra space for their meals for two. <laughs> I'd better go and call John. Hello. Tables. Oh, wow, they're nice. Do you want to turn one over and have a look? This is a table for two. What? <laughs> what do you mean that's a table for two? I know. How can that be a table for two? OK, a table for two or a table for two. 42. Have you, have you done your measurements? How many tables do you think you're going to get in here this size? Um. Oh, hang on, what about a chair? It's a table for two. Well, you have to put the chair there, then. Yeah, of course. Slide in, sit down. Oh, Kim, what have you done? Look, it's the whole floor and downstairs. Stop whinging, please. They're too big. They're not too they big. They are too big. They're not. They are. They're very nice, but they're too big. Oh, well, maybe you should have chosen them, then. I think you probably Oh, might. sorry, I got it wrong on the table for There's a table for two. Table for two, thank you very much. <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> Are you awake? <laughs> There's only one thing I can say to you. They've cost too much, yeah, go on. Chairs. It's Thursday morning. Oh, if you leave anything till Thursday morning, you are absolutely out of your mind. John's life is one continuous moan. The grumpy git. <laughs> Early next morning, with one day left to get the restaurant ready for opening, John's hitting the publicity trail. Joining me in the studio now, John Burton Race, new owner of The Carved Angel. Well, The New Angel now. The New Angel? Yeah. Firstly, how's it going? Have you been welcomed? Very much so. I mean, the people here are fantastic. I didn't realise... With the house on the line, if the restaurant fails, John's under immense financial pressure. You know, it's cost me... The best part of quarter of a million pounds to buy the lease, quarter of a million pounds to do the place up. Yeah. You're into something that isn't yours and it's cost you half a million quid. And um, I'm hiding from the bank at the moment because I have gone over budget. Advice to anyone that's listening now that wants to start up a restaurant? Don't do it. That's okay. <laughs> Simple as that. It's crucial that the restaurant's full, week in, week out. So there's no let up in the PR campaign. Best of luck for tomorrow. I need it, thank you. <laughs> nice to see you again. I hope you're going to come in. Yes, most definitely. Back in the kitchen, John is determined to get the restaurant's spiralling costs under control. What do you mean? 87 pounds. This, that, that costs 90 pounds? 87. You haven't given the menu to Edwin yet, have you? No. Edwin? Yes. We're changing the turbot dish. Right, let's go. When I've done cut it up, I'll tell you how much it is, and then we'll go and make another dish. How come we're on the, on the sea and this little fish here costs 90 quid? Nigel, we've really got to get our head round the day boats, OK? Yes, sir. So the initial start-up costs are scary. I've already spent, in the last two days, £4,500 on perishable food, £2,500 on dry stores. What the hell's that got to do with cooking, you know? Well, I'll tell you what it's got to do with cooking, everything. Because if you haven't got that right, you're bust before you've started. And so that's driving me mad. Do you know what we should do with this? We can grill it. Mm -hmm. Yes, have we? Sauce bearnaise. Yeah. If we've got hollandaise en place, yeah, we will that's have. what we're going to do. OK. 
OK? Right. And then get me some pom sauté and we'll do a little side salad. With less than 24 hours until the first customers are expected. <laughs> children have turned up to offer their encouragement. And, uh, no, it's gorgeous, honestly. Yeah. You've got a woman's job. It's a bit scary to think it's going to be open by tomorrow. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Delicious. Watch them go. I'm feeling pretty scared now. Oh, God, there's so much to do. Stop! <laughs> and it's about to get scarier. After the onslaught of the children, John gets news that the environmental health inspector is on his way to scrutinise the restaurant. Why? Why are they coming back again? Just, he's being friendly. He's not coming. What's friendly about keep coming back? Go and look at some other restaurants in Dartmouth. That's not finished. That's not covered. That room's not done. That isn't grouted in. That's not finished. That's not painted. We don't that's need not, the environmental health. That's here. not his issue. He's coming in just to see how we're getting on. Well, you can kiss his ass because I'm not going to. Well done, my friend. I will. Have biscuits. It's my yeah. job. And I said I was going to have a simple restaurant. I must be mad. Today's a down day. Hello. Oh, that's all right. Very indeed. How are you? All right. The health Getting inspector there. has the power to stop yeah. the restaurant from opening. Do you want to come and have a look? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. if you may. So yeah. Edwin is on his best behaviour as he shows him round. This rendering, all this is obviously coming out again. OK, yeah. what about uh, access to pests okay. at the eaves? Okay. Basically, this room hasn't been touched yet, so it will be done as soon as possible. There's no food stuff's going to be in here anyway. There's going to be a, a cap on that drain. That's when is that going to be done? Ed, when are you getting that strain sorted? Um, within the next day or two. Yeah, well, I would want it sorted before we actually open tomorrow. Really? Yeah, I want the drain properly covered. OK. And in addition to that, I want these holes Filled. in the wall plugged as well. Again, just for wine, so it's all... Only wine, no food stuff. Ventilation? In the huge top. Off to you. I'll escort you off the premises. <laughs> no, I want the speed, I don't know. The health inspector has insisted that four jobs be carried out. Unless all the jobs are done, as far as the kitchen is concerned, we can't open tomorrow night. With the countdown to opening ticking away, the bank breathing down their necks, and now extra work to do, the pressure is really on. Oh, and all this stuff here, out. Full team. Any boxes upstairs, out. Because before we leave here, every single floor has got to be hoovered, brushed and mopped. Some of this dust, all right? The chairs and the cutlery still haven't arrived. The beef stock needs another 10 hours, and the builders are way behind. Even John's usual optimism is beginning to fade. If you look around the restaurant, I really can't see how it's going to happen. Big things need to be done, and even if the lads work round the clock, I don't, I don't know how it's going to happen, but we'll have to wait and see. Six weeks ago, John and Kim were living in London's commuter belt, dreaming of a new life on the Devon coast. Their dream now hangs in the balance. Tomorrow, they'll find out if their hard work has been enough to open the restaurant on time and keep their dream alive. Well, next on 4, the network premiere of Michael Moore's Fahrenheit 9-11.